Friends, recently we discussed that Toyota is taking Scion very seriously as of late by introducing not one, but two cars simultaneously. We already looked at the larger of the two, the IM, and determined it was somewhere in the middle of the driving dynamic spectrum, but very high on the value spectrum. Now let's take a look at the smaller car, the IA. But before we set out on this journey, I feel it prudent to point out that this is yet another Scion, not built by Scion. So exciting engine technology is not generally the bastion of B-segment cars, but that is not a traditional engine in this B-segment carrying case. That is a 1.5 liter four-cylinder engine that is direct injected and puts out a fire-breathing 106 horsepower at a relatively high 6,000 RPM and 103 pound-feet of torque at an also relatively high 4,000 RPM. Now, neither of those figures are entirely exciting, so what is the exciting part of this engine? And that would be the pistons. You see, the pistons have a dome shape on top of them, and that translates to a different combustion chamber, which has a higher compression ratio. So in this case, it is a 12 to 1 compression ratio. Now, that's all fine and good, but what does a 12 to 1 compression ratio translate to pulling power in a B-segment car? Well, when you have a 12 to 1 compression ratio in a little car like this that weighs next to nothing, the car actually pulls pretty well. Now, I am well aware that maybe 3.3 of you that are watching this are actually going to try to recreate this little test, but think about what this car is designed for around town. Think about situations like getting on the freeway, getting up to speed, or let's say there's an obstacle, you need to get around it. We're talking about a safety situation here. You try this in like a regular Fiesta or, a, you know, heaven forbid, a Versa Note or something like that, you would never be able to accelerate or get around that obstacle. Now, I am well aware that that statement makes me sound like Eddie Haskell, and I'm trying to be very nice to your mother. Well, thank you very much, Mrs. Cleaver. You're looking lovely today. But 12 to 1 compression ratio and funny pistons to you and I translates to a little car, a little city car, that's actually a hell of a lot of fun to drive because it actually has some power. So this car and cars like it are very much designed to live and breathe in city environments, but you and I still need to unpack driving dynamics. Now, Toyota and Scion have not made it a secret that this car is designed and engineered by Mazda. Actually, it's built by Mazda in Mexico. Uh, but there are a couple of things that were built into it to really aid to driving dynamics. Like, for example, the electronic power steering system, the actual rack is connected directly to the subframe without a bushing, and the whole idea is to lower the weight. The actual uh, transmission itself has a certain weight to it that you wouldn't get in a car in this segment, even a car a couple of segments above it. And that leads to a car that weighs a little over 2,400 pounds. But putting all that together, how does that translate to driving dynamics on the road? We can't really dive into the B-segment driving dynamics discussion without talking about the Fiesta ST. I mean, that thing is an entirely different beast than this. It's got more power. It's got a different tune to the suspension. It's just an entirely different tool than this. That's meant for a different kind of driver. This is meant for the everyday driver. And when you think about it from the perspective of the everyday driver, this is so much at the, and I don't say this lightly, so much at the top end of the driving dynamic scale, it's, it's like, it's surprising. Like, I didn't expect to like this, driving this car at all when I got into it, but you go, look at this, you were going around some turns here, and actually we're going downhill, which makes it, disturbs the car even more, and there's very little pitch, squat, dive, or roll. Like, let's downshift here, go through some more declining radius turns here, and notice, there's virtually no roll, and usually in cars that have this type of setup in the rear end, there's usually a lot of body roll to either side. Here it's very composed, and even if I go to a higher gear going around a turn, notice, let's go around this turn in third gear, the car is somewhat controlled. You get a little tire squeal, but there's virtually no pitch from side to side. So design has a huge impact on all cars, but when it comes to B-segment cars, it actually almost works sort of against them. 
So the airflow over most cars kind of helps with the fuel efficiency. On a B segment car, it actually works against it a little bit. For example, with a shorter wheelbase and the stubby rear end, the airflow is not as efficient as it runs over the car. So in this case, the fuel economy, 31, 41 and 37 combined is actually not as high as a C-segment car, which is larger. And that is with the manual transmission. This is one of the few cars that has a geared automatic transmission, thankfully, and the fuel economy is actually higher. Um, but that is the design as it relates to the outside. How does it have an impact on the inside of the car? Okay, so value is great and all, but at the end of the day, you're not driving a payment or a price. You're driving a car. You're the one that has to sit your ass in this thing for, what, four hours a day to and from work and carting the rugrats around, going on dates, whatever you do with a car like this. So I'm always reminded when I deal with like B-segment cars and C-segment cars of the statement that Bob Lutz and I came up with a couple of years ago. And it's, it's very simple. Are you pizza fans? Um, there is a point in life where you can make a pizza so cheap that nobody wants to eat it. And so there is a car in this segment, the, the, the Versa. It is the cheapest car or the most inexpensive car in the segment, but it's not a fun car to drive and it's not in a, a very pleasant place to be. So Scion, we've talked about, has gone to this point of putting all this stuff as standard and the, the build quality of this car from Mazda in Mexico really fantastic, especially when you consider the price point and what this car competes against. So we are at the end of a shoot day and we're trying to get a couple of stand-ups for this car and the lovely Carrie walks by and uh, Carrie looks at the car and says, oh, that's a Scion. Now, what do you do, Carrie? I'm an artist. You are an artist. I paint, I draw. And um, you said you're a certain kind of gal. What kind of gal are you? I'm a car gal. Yeah, and what kind of cars have you had? <laughs> Mustang You've, GTs. Must, not just Mustangs, but no, and how GTs. many have you had? Oh, well, two but three. Two but three? Yeah. We'll and three. your son has a Mustang too. He does. So you are really a car gal and the whole family is a car gal. Yes. Or guy, He's a car, say. car guy. Now, what do you drive now? I drive an XB. So you do drive a Scion? I do. Did you buy this because of value? No. Did you buy this because of the one price thing? No, but I found out about that. Why did you buy your Scion? Just because it fit a 4x5 canvas. And this is how you get a car girl out of a GT Mustang into a Scion. <laughs> okay, thank you, Carrie. Well, that's theory, but I still have to spend a lot of time in this car, so what's it like? The design that they've done here, and this design was done by uh, Derek Jenkins and his crew down in Irvine, California. They've taken a very small car and completely opened up the dashboard by transferring everything to here, here, and the screen up here, it makes this so much lighter in feel. Like you don't feel like this thing is totally in your face. So the car, while it still feels small from the driver's seat, you actually have this feeling like you're driving a couple of classes above the car. And it's not just the shapes, it's the textures as well. Like notice they got this blue stitch. Granted, I, I hate the color interior of this thing. Like you got this red, this cool red on the outside. Why not like a light gray or a tan or something different to kind of show the details? Like you put so much effort in, in this like, the satin chrome here or these very cool, this, I love the pageantry of these round vents here. And even this big hazard, it's a really neat place to be but I think some coloring would help. And you know, there's an old design saying, it, details don't cost extra. So a detail of changing color, that frankly wouldn't cost extra and would still keep within the line of the Scion one price deal. Now, I am gonna complain about one thing and you know what it's gonna be. I understand we're keeping a price down here, but I would love to open up the airiness of this design by putting a sunroof in this car. So in summary, what do we got? Well, a surprise. When I rolled into driving this thing, I totally expected, eh, it's got a lot of stuff and not too big of a price. But that's not why you would buy this thing. It's actually fun to drive. Like for example, if you were to come to me and say, hey, I need a car for my mother or my girlfriend or whoever, and you didn't want to spend a lot of money, I would totally suggest this car for you. And I kind of never do that with you guys. Which leaves us with a question. Now this car is what, $16,000.
Uh, it does compete with a Nissan Versa, which is $12,000. But the driving dynamics of that and just the whole package, nowhere near what this is, but that is a lot cheaper. So my question to you is this, would you buy this at 16, the Nissan Versa at 12, or a used car? Let me know which one you would pick and why in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV all in word, Moto Man TV all in word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And until next time, I am going to go on a quest to find another car that leaves me with a surprise.